According to statistics, 7 out of 1,000 newborns are affected by some form of birth injury, which can occur before, during, and even shortly after the delivery. Such incidents are unfortunate, but many are preventable by physicians adhering to proper standards of care, closely monitoring the health of both mother and child, and addressing any suspicious issues during pregnancy, labor, and delivery. Not all birth injuries are treatable, but understanding more about them can help prevent them or deal with them if they regrettably occur. Cerebral palsy, also referred to as CP, is not a specific condition, but is actually a category of conditions that occurs in approximately 4 out of 1,000 live births. CP can result from infant brain injury and affects muscle control that can lead to delays in speech and development. There are many treatments to relieve the symptoms and help patients live more independently, but there is no cure for cerebral palsy. Injuries that can result in CP include heart attack or stroke, bleeding in the brain, medical negligence, fever and infection, and oxygen deficiency in the brain. Herb's palsy, otherwise known as brachial plexus, is a birth injury resulting from paralysis of the child's shoulder, arm, or hand due to mild or severe nerve damage during delivery. The brachial plexus nerves connect the spinal cord to the arms and help control feeling and movement. This kind of nerve damage can occur from excess pulling on the baby's head or neck, stretching the child's feet during a breech delivery, and if the infant's shoulders, head, or neck get stuck either under the pelvic bone or in the birth canal during delivery. Unlike cerebral palsy, it's possible for a child with Herb's palsy to fully recover without any treatment, though some require surgery or physical therapy. However, severe cases may cause permanent damage or paralysis to the affected limb. Spinal damage can occur when a doctor pulls the child's spine too hard during birth. This type of injury can interfere with the spine's signals to the brain, affecting a child's movement and sense of touch. Though spinal damage was once thought to be irreparable, recent research suggests that surgery can be a viable option and has resulted in significant neurological recovery. However, there are treatments and physical therapy that can help prevent the injury from becoming worse. Jaundice occurs due to elevated levels of bilirubin, a pigment created when the body replaces blood cells. Jaundice often clears up within 14 days, but if too much bilirubin accumulates, it can result in permanent brain damage. Typical symptoms of jaundice include yellow skin or eyes, fatigue, difficulty eating, and a loud high-pitched cry. Untreated jaundice can cause kernicterus, a condition which may cause various additional health issues such as seizures, brain damage, and hearing loss. Hypoxic ischemic encephalopathy, called HIE for short, can occur if a child lacks oxygen and blood flow during delivery. This can happen due to an abnormally long labor, placental bleeding, or pregnancy complication from the placenta detaching from the uterus, the fetus emerging from the wrong position, and an umbilical cord prolapse, which means that the umbilical cord drops from the open cervix into the vagina before the child moves into the birth canal. HIE affects the baby more if the injury is severe and can result in symptoms that include feeding problems, hearing and vision problems, and seizures. Cephalohematoma occurs when a newborn bleeds under the skin above the skull. This causes a pool of blood in the surrounding tissues. Symptoms of this injury can include anemia due to blood loss, seizures, depressions, or swelling in the head, and larger than average head size. Stillbirth, the technical term is intrauterine fetal demise, is when a fetus tragically dies before delivery. There are several factors to be aware of that can increase the risk of stillbirth. Umbilical cord prolapse, carrying twins, triplets, or other multiples, maternal diabetes, obesity, and high blood pressure. Genetic factors. Some birth injuries are detectable immediately after delivery while others take months or years before a proper diagnosis can be reached. There are different birth injury treatments available, depending on the baby's specific needs. Some children may need less treatment, while others may require long-term medical intervention for their entire lives. Occupational therapy can help children who have difficulties accomplishing daily tasks, 
such as reading, writing, bathing, eating, and brushing their teeth. Those with developmental delays in speech can undergo speech therapy. Assistive devices such as wheelchairs, leg braces, or crutches can assist children who find it difficult to move. Others may need catheters or breathing support if their injuries are more severe. Certain medications can help treat pain in seizures, spasticity, swelling, and incontinence. Surgery is an option in situations where medication therapy and assistive devices won't help. Symptoms such as brain bleeds, seizures, and blood clots may need surgery. Proper diagnosis of affected body parts usually involves a series of tests to determine effective treatments. That makes understanding distinct types of birth injuries vital to help prevent or recognize them. You can find abundant resources to help you learn more about birth injury causes, treatments, and more at birthinjurycenter.org.